$3.7 trillion in generational BIPOC buying power is available. Are agencies being aware and not only embracing DIBA from a PR, are you literally integrating that into how you market and sell, which is opening up the gates of all this abundance of new money to come into to help your clients as well as yourself? I think it's less about how many more MVPs, how many more products can we offer? Can we just hone in on what we do best and expand those experiences in order not only to make more money, but to make a bigger impact at the, a larger scale? This is Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition, your go-to guide to solving your biggest marketing agency challenges authentically. I'm your host, Mike Galton, and each episode is an honest and frank look at what agencies go through, from turning clients to tackling tech and ideas that you can apply to your own business. And now, the rest of today's episode. Welcome back to Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition, where each and every week, we're talking to marketing agencies like you, going through many of the same struggles you're going through and sharing their stories. Subscribe to find on each episode inspiration, motivation, and the perspiration that go into growing and scaling agencies like yours. Now, gone are the days of mad men advertising agencies and the attitudes that went along with them. Today, marketing agencies have and continue to evolve in how they're structured, how they operate, and how they communicate. Brands are looking for disruptors, anti-agencies, bold thinkers with new ways of conducting business and providing value. What are these new approaches? And if we're leading a more traditional agency, how and what should we be considering changing? That's what Troy Sandage is here to help us with. He is the strategy hacker, a renowned growth marketing strategist, global speaker, award-winning podcaster, and author. With a career spanning over 15 years, he's developed a reputation for creating sustainable, scalable, and profitable strategies that drive significant business growth, generating over $175 million in client revenue, and successfully launching over 35 brands worldwide. Troy's expertise in integrating psychology, sociology, and behavior science with demand generation, go-to-market initiatives, and brand development has resulted in transformative growth pathways for a wide range of brands. Hey, Troy, welcome to the show. I am here. Thank you for having me, Mike. Let's go. And I want to say really quick, you know, you have watched me grow from like a baby marketer to whatever that bio was. <laughs> I was it's like 15 years. Journey. Do I reflect that? Like, you know what? I appreciate you always being in my corner. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I it was so tickled to see some of the strides that you took in the last year or so. We're talking like 2023, you know, taking the main stage at, at events like Inbound and even all your other speaking engagements and the work that you're doing. It's fantastic. So I'm just going to say right off the bat, I am thrilled you're here on the show. I even use some of your language in the introduction when we're talking about agencies and the struggles that they're running through today. So thank you. So let's start off by letting everybody know more about what you do. I wanted to talk about Season 3 Media, S3M. Your, your agency has got a really cool mission. I'd like you to share that and tell us more about what you're doing with the agency and who you help. Yeah, so Season 3 Media was born through one of the events that I got to co-host with my co-founder, Christina Kay. And our thought process was, we don't want to necessarily make an agency, <laughs> but we thought, how about we make a collective? So it gives you the semblance of an agency, but is better, more transformative. And our goal is, how do we make businesses more money, more awareness, more brand resonance, while being more inclusive? and doing it in a more equitable way. So DEIBA, diversity, equity, inclusion, belongingness, and accessibility as the nucleus for that plateau. And on addition to that, how do we lean into more human-centric practices? Because it's one thing to make money. It's another thing to make money that makes you feel good on the inside and makes a ripple effect on the outside to expand the impact of people who probably, for the most part, have not been acknowledged and have not been considered as buyers. And so we have been challenging brands, whether big or small enterprises, event organizers, whether they're trying to cultivate events or launching marketing campaigns, do these campaigns, do these events, do these initiatives represent the humans that you're trying to serve? And are you missing people out? We're all trying to create new MVPs and launch new products and all these different things. What if I told you all we have to do to make more money is just open the lens just a little bit wider for more people to see themselves reflected through these campaigns and content and initiatives to then 
give you your buying dollars. And that's what we're trying to do with season three media. Love it. Listeners, you can harken back just to the previous episode where we were talking to George Thomas and he had so many of these same themes into his why, why he has an agency. You know, it's all about the humans, which seems like an odd thing to say. And yet at the same time, it seems like, well, why aren't we all focused on working with other humans? We should be, right? Too many of us are. But you kind of flew past this thing in that statement that you just made. And I got to reel back in and talk about it because you, you basically said, oh, we don't really think of ourselves as an agency. We think of ourselves as a collective. Now, if you're a sci-fi geek like me, you're immediately thinking about the board collective. It's not that. Tell us what it is. What do you mean by collective? Why is that? And how do you think agencies are evolving today? You know, I've been doing a lot of brainstorming and talking with a lot of people. And, you know, believe it or not, um, and for those who are agencies, you'll understand. For those who are building agencies, you'll understand. For those who aren't at agencies, you'll probably understand the most. Sometimes when we hear the word agency, it can trigger us as a consumer mm. or as a partner of your big brand. Like, ooh, because let's be, see, let's be real. Everyone has had a bad agency experience, a bad agency <laughs> story. And all of a sudden, that is the premise for every other agency you ever work with. We think you're nickel and doming us. We're, we have this relationship of, you know, can you do this faster? Or are you just trying to milk more money per hour or per project or per retainer? Like we don't want to feel trapped. And so we want to eliminate that simply by the verbiage that we're choosing. Now, some people may say, well, yeah, you just changed the word from age to collective, but you're running the same thing. No, contrary. I built five of them. We're really trying to be different and different is okay. You don't grow without change. And so we're trying to change how we're being perceived in order to be a more inclusive space for people to actually trust us, not only with their money, but with their vision and ideas to hopefully work together. So a collective is what we're trying to pitch is we're assembling groups. We're not trying to be the be all. If we can be part of your team to help facilitate, to get you to where you want to be, that's where we fit in best. That's where we fit in the most. And another thing I would add to that, when we're trying to lean into a more collective mindset, then maybe the tried and true agency mindset model from years past. It's all about collaboration, not competition. I don't feel any other agency is a threat. If anything, agencies work with us. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. going to do experiential marketing. Y'all can do your sales. You can do your pipeline. You can do the retainers. I always like to think of it like this, and especially with this economy happening right now for agencies, any little bit more pie we can get is better than no pie by being prideful and being egotistic. Let's collaborate. And so with the premise of a collective is saying we want to genuinely not just be a partner. It takes both of us to mm -hmm. make this happen. As many agencies owners know, they put you in a box and they think, hey, you know, we're going to pay you this money and you're going to, you know, wave a magic wand, be our fairy god agency mother or father and help us get to where we need to be. No, I still need you to do your part. Because as a collective, it allows us to meet in the middle of that intersection and hopefully hold everyone accountable. If you do your part and we do our part, we're going to get to where we need to go. Totally agree. And one of the things you talked about initially was that there's change happening. There's change happening with your agency. You're seeing change happen in the industry. Tony Robbins talks about how nobody changes anything unless there's enough pain or pleasure to actually force them to make that change. You can, you're not going to just say, I want to lose weight or I want a new pricing structure unless there's reason for it, right? So what were some of the reasons? What are some of the key drivers that you've seen that are bringing about that change? Either they're they're forcing you or they're inspiring you to change yourself, or maybe you're seeing that uh, in the industry. Because like we said, you've been around, you've been in this business, brother, for a while. You've seen some stuff. What's happening? I think now we're seeing the marketplace is saying, do better or else, period. Since... I, if I go back a step back to the year of George Floyd and what that transited, for me, that was a trigger, not for me just as a black man, but it was almost a call to arms to saying, hey, we can be better. We can be different with how we collaborate and market to our audience pool. And diversity isn't a PR checklist no more. It's not something I like to say. People think of it as a Power Rangers uh, assembly. No, that's not what diversity is about. It's about the reflectiveness of culture of different ideas to create that innovation pathway for people to not only see themselves, but align themselves with you. Agencies of themselves, we can no longer hide behind the logos that we put 
on our website. We have to be one of those logos. We have to be a purpose-driven agency or, in my case, a collective agency, whatever you want to call it, tomatoes, tomatoes. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. I think the demand of that and what enterprise brands want to collaborate for, with big agencies or mid-sized cap agencies, what growing funded startups want to do, they want to create experiences, and that requires us to think differently. We have to think of social media not just as content distribution, but as SEO, as search engine assets now, because people are getting away from Google. They're going looking in TikTok. They're looking at YouTube. They're looking at Reddit as actual search engines for their problems. You as a brand entity or you serving for your brand entities, are you creating those experiences and those pathways to do it? And so it's really forcing us to look at the tried and true what was with Oglivy and all those other back then. The demand is different. We have five generations with buying power. I just did a talk uh, with Brooke on her show, and I articulated $3.7 trillion in generational BIPOC buying power is available. Our agencies being aware and not only embracing DIBA from a PR, are you literally integrating that into how you market and sell, which is opening up the gates of all this abundance of new money to come into to help your clients as well as yourself? I think it's less about how many more MVPs, how many more products can we offer? Can we just hone in on what we do best and expand those experiences in order not only to make more money, but to make a bigger impact at the, a larger scale? And does that take a lot of work? Yes. Does it require you to learn a new language? Yes. Does it require you to maybe collaborate with other people, get some strategies and insights to understand your audiences a little bit better and what we can pivot and modify? Yes. But either you do those things and you are the next gen moving forward, or you're slowly going to see your Q1s, Q2s, going to your Q3s, Q4s deteriorating. You're not making as much money. Now you were dealing with layoffs, and we don't want to deal with none of that. We want to be sustainable. But that requires change, and that requires you to adapt to what the demand of the market is saying. The market is screaming, give us innovation. Give us change. Give us unity. Give us diversity. It was so astute of you to mentioned George Floyd because longtime subscribers of my own newsletter will know I'm a historian. And so when I'm looking back at the last 10 or so years, I can see the George Floyd incident while being a horrible thing in and of itself was also one of those pivotal moments in history where it brought awareness and just so much more visibility, not just on the issues surrounding that incident, but to your larger point, how each of our businesses are being aware of and embracing diversity and equity and so on. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that from that agency perspective, DEIBA, just so everyone understands, again, it's diversity, equity, inclusivity, belonging, and accessibility. I love that. How not to just be diverse, but how to actually bake that into every aspect of our agency's organization from structure to services to marketing campaigns, how are some of the ways that you're approaching that today? You know, it's it's a learning curve. And I and I say that with love because no one's just going to snap their fingers and we're just going to have this all together. It is a progressively mm -hmm. learning thing because if we learn more, we can do more. And understand that everyone who's listening or watching, um, whether you're a leader, you're an owner of an agency, you're going to be at different areas of what you can do and what you can't do yet. And I'll premise what I mean by that in a second. But to go back to really understand DIBA and why you should do this, it's not a matter of just sounds good. It's literally going to be a matter of survival. Because now, as the generations are shifting and buying power and who cares now, it's less about legacy. It's about impact of what you're doing right now. And as more of us are reflective of that and care about that, we have to now join force and align ourselves to that. So if you were an agency and let's say, for lack of better terms, you're in a social economic place where maybe most of your team and who you interact with isn't as diverse. Let me stop you right there. This is not to make anyone feel guilty or feel some type of way. Oh, well, you are literally in a certain location on this planet, on this nation, <laughs> United States or wherever you are abroad, where it may not be as a diverse pool. That doesn't mean even within that, you can't be embracing more equitable ways of how you operate with your teams 
And even if we go, maybe not even ethnicity to race, but even gender personas, are we mm -hmm. making sure our women and LGBTQIA individuals, whether they are clients or on our teams, are reflected, are heard in the decision-making process? Are we considering them and how we operate? But ultimately, whether you have opportunity to be more diverse in how you hire, how you build and bridges with clients, or maybe lack thereof, there is this happy medium where if we just embrace our teams and consider them, it's just going to be better all the way around. Now, the dance and all of this, and I'll be very cautious, we do unfortunately live still in a world where there is still prejudice and racism and hatred and lack of understanding and um, information being sent that isn't real. And with that said, you have to also do an audit of how much can we do to embrace that change fluidly without burning our bridges for maybe other external factors that may not be ready yet. Let's go back to George Floyd. That window of time as a black marketer and speaker was the most uncomfortable time I've ever had. Why? Because mm -hmm. I was in the most demand I've ever been to talk on something very near and to me that I never associated or a tie to directly to business. But right. because of what have happened, now this is in the forefront. Now this matters. Now this is a reality that most people care. How do we make this dance? How, Troy, how do I, as an agency owner, advise my clients to navigate social media during tough times when certain things are happening? Do we proceed? Do we not? Even if our you know audience base is predominantly not of that maybe ethnicity or race that is navigating that certain challenge in this moment, do we acknowledge it? Do we not? And I always, and I got so many calls and so many things, and I think you had me on at that time too as well, if I yeah. do not, if I recall yeah. correctly. And the balance is this: you have to take inventory of where the psychological mindset is of your audience and your client base. It does you no good, and does no good to the future of embracing DIBA if you activate it with so much zeal, and you're not using wisdom data and psychology to make sure it aligns and you're doing it in baby steps that's going to reap ultimate results just like i'm going in the gym you go in the gym you lift the heaviest weights consistently hard for two days you're out versus gradually <laughs> progressing it'll be a lot easier now people want to just shift gears it's not that simple we are dealing with not just better equitable practices and the outcomes but in the people we're serving the people that we're helping and some people aren't on different levels so you have to gauge your audience pool and test out and sing, where does this land? And the easiest way, I'm going to give you all the easiest gym right now. The easiest way to do this is ask and amplify somebody else who is more equipped to share those insights and see how your audience takes it. One, you're not directly saying anything, which protects you until you get your win and seeing where everyone is. Two, you're amplifying someone or a group of individuals more qualified, which is great. <laughs> you're show, sowing those seeds. And three, you're actually introducing external factors, other in other mindsets and sources of information into the mix to see how well your audience plays with it, how well your clients agree with it or align with it. And from those testings, you now can put a pathway forward of, and again, the ex exercise as, a, as an analogy here, how many reps can we do of this? How can we do it of that? And I think that's where a lot of agencies or just business in general, brands, if you're representing them, fail because they don't gauge the arms before they implement. And they either go too fast, too hard, too quickly, or they go too slow and it hurts them either way. We have to find the right engagement of areas of how we're implementing these things so that way we don't put the DIBA in vain and it sets us back because we're going to say, well, because we did diversity and embraced it, it could hurt us. Versus we did in the right caliber of way, it can actually help us. That makes complete sense. And, and I always like to underline that DEIBA starts with diversity, but doesn't end with diversity. You know, to your point, if you're in, you know, that kind of a socioeconomic location where, you know, diversity is a really hard challenge for you in terms of like hiring. Well, okay, then you could be looking at being more equitable, like you mentioned, in, in gender or bring more accessible and bring in kinds of folks that, you know, whether they look different from the other people that you're hiring or not. Maybe they wouldn't have been, you know, quite so hireable in a previous generation because of a disability or something along those lines. And I think one of the things that we should talk about on behalf of agencies is how they can help their clientele mm. be more diverse and inclusive and so on in terms of their campaigns. So I'm wondering if 
you've been in a situation where you've tried to uh, coach or advise a client, or maybe you've seen this, or just have some general advice for agencies where they want their client to be more diverse or inclusive or accessible in their marketing and they're proposing perhaps, you know, campaign ideas and that sort of thing. And then trying to pitch these ideas, how do they get that across the board with maybe a client that's, I don't want to say not receptive to the idea, but maybe just not as understanding of the importance of it. I align it always back to green. When I can align it to the M O N E Y, a lot of the things okay. <laughs> these executives I was like, may, may have may have a reason behind. I'm wearing gray now to reflect that. It makes it a lot easier. So, and even in my language and how I, because again, we all come from different knowledge bases of DEIBA, and sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. You know, and I and I understand the premise. So I'd never shut anything away. I'm, I'm an open book, and I'm very eager to listen to everyone individually, equally. But when you look at these campaigns, I align it with diversity equals revenue, inclusivity equals innovation. When I can associate the why to your outcome, they may not even justifiably choose it because of the reason. But now it's like, oh, okay, this makes it easier for me to have this conversation. But then I would also interject data. And so if you're trying to work with the brand and they're launching, uh, they're trying to create a new campaign going into the summer season and all these different things, the best way is to find brands who already paved the way and see how rece- uh, people received it. There was a campaign that was done recently with someone with Down syndrome, and they did a phenomenal job, made it more modern. And I think people are seeing that. It's like, I never thought to include it and do it in that way. But once people see it once, they now know how to interject that in an equitable way, but still captures the attention and the heart. And again, if you're a modern day agency, your job is to move people's currency to drive real currency. And if the people are reflected in your marketing campaigns, if the people are reflected in your language, in your copy, and again, you may not be able to hire diversity, but you can still reflect diversity in your marketing, in your initiatives, and in even in your tech stack. If you evaluate your entire tech stack, where is it from? How are you using that? And so when you can tie in these psychological manners of where we're trying to improve into the literal of money, of tactics, of creative, of tech stack, you can integrate a lot of things really quickly and easily, more easily, um, with little or less resistance than if you were to go forefront with it. Now, some people may say, well, Troy, I don't want it that way. I want people to just receive it that way. Well, I'm telling you, I have uh, 32 years of being a black African-American man on this earth. And I'm telling you, you have to do it with grace and understand that everyone is a little bit different and moving the stride a little bit better, a little bit faster. Again, get a little bit more of that pie is better than no pie or setting us back. And so when you think of it that way through those lenses, it makes it a little bit easier to interject. Then the last thing I would say on this to reflect when you're looking at how much or how little i was like at audience dictates direction when you lead it with that and all the stuff that we're talking about you're always going to dictate how much you can drive how much you can push how much you can integrate at any point in time and when you lead with that it allows it to be a much easier to receive easier to operate and easier to implement see troy this is why i love talking to you first of all it was brilliant points and second of all there it was you dropped Another one of those acronyms, <laughs> you know, you've, you've been on a couple of our shows here for, for Agora Pulse over the years. I should do oh a little my. montage of all these oh little God. phrases you've, you've dropped. I think cash was one back in the day. I don't even remember what they stood <laughs> for, but yeah, I will do that. Folks, we're talking with Troy Sandage about many of the challenges facing marketing agencies today. And I'd like to share a quick story with you from our friends at J29 about how they're facing some of these challenges with the help of Agora Pulse. Social media management is such a growing market. It's what websites used to be during the dot-com era. It's very challenging, especially for the small to medium-sized business owners because they really can't do it on their own. And if they do want to do it on their own, it can get very expensive. It's a missing piece in today's market. As the owner of a digital marketing agency, it became very challenging to be able to manage um, all these different accounts. We were working easily 10 to 12 hour days, not being able to spend time with our family. 
we started seeking out a social media platform. I know there's HubSpot, there's Hootsuite. What I really noticed with each tool was that there was always something missing. We were looking for something that was all-encompassing. And we found Agora Pulse. It posts automatically, but not just to one social media channel, but multiple. And it really transformed J29 Creative to what it is today. Out of the box, we were able to accomplish what we needed. It allows our social media managers to work anywhere, anytime. I spend a lot of time meeting with our individual clients, helping them manage and strategize. So being able to, on the fly, take a look at the posting schedule that we set up has been great. It has allowed us to also show our clients an ROI because one of the most challenging things with social media management is putting dollar figures to what we're doing. It has charts and graphs to be able to show those things. Whether I'm working with my copywriters, um, some of my video editors, or my graphic designers, Agorapulse is really great because it helps us work with many different moving parts. The biggest thing with social media, in order to do it well, it takes time. And when it takes time, it takes away from your family, your vacations, and the ability to be able to just relax. It has really helped me give the best service I can to my clients and provide the best solution to managing a social media account. As business owners, we all need time for ourselves. And that's what Agora Pulse allows us to do. That's our friend Kevin Kwok in, in Kansas City, another great Midwestern town. And one of the things I loved about what he said right at the beginning was about how hard it is to be an agency, particularly in today's economic times, financially. Clients are struggling and therefore agencies are struggling. I think 2023 was a particularly hard year for agencies. And that speaks a whole lot to what you were just talking about before, where in the past, a lot of agency owners and businesses would have thought about DEIBA as a cost to the business. And I love how well you illustrated that. Yes, it's a challenge, but it's an, also an opportunity of an actual financial opportunity, if not a moral and a societal opportunity. What other areas have you seen changed or seen change in the industry that's impacting how a modern marketing agency approaches doing business today, whether that's how they're structured, the services they offer, or perhaps even the clientele that they work with? Oh, it's definitely people are looking at the microscope now, y'all. <laughs> it's not how, again, we can't hide behind the logos anymore. They want to know who's on the team. Are you reflective? Like for season three media, we're a minority-owned, women-led, black-led, Latina-ex-led organization. We're very upfront about that. And again, it's not to, and I, I don't want people to perceive or uh, receive this in a way of like we're trying to collect, you know, this and that and express. No, we're mm. trying to be very reflective because we're saying we're coming from different walks of life. And we understand that a lot of the people who choose to be our clients are from different walks of life. And if one aligns with you better than others, know that the others will align behind you. And that's where the collective comes in. But when we think about that from what ages are doing now, again, it's all about purpose driven. So who do you have on your board? Who do you collaborate with? Who do you have as guests on your podcast? Who do you have as experiences and collaborative on these things? It not only differentiates you, it does create opportunities because people care more about that. If you think about now with a lot of initiatives, I just saw a new initiative for the SDA that they've increased who they partner with from agencies. Again, sometimes agencies, again, I've been through some of these hard times and challenges. Trust me, we need the money. We need that green and that M O N E Y for sure. We're streaming it. <laughs> and sometimes it's not always coming from where we think. The government has literally said we are initializing more money to give to agencies if you, through your agency, can help us hit our quotas and our numbers to impact social economic for different business structures and things like that. And it's like, oh, I didn't think if I would have just acknowledged my agency can do this or we've done these things, the government's going to give us the money to do more <laughs> of these things. So that means we don't have to worry about, oh, well, I want to help you with this impact and this cause, but we do need some money. Well, no, the money's already here. Just do what you do best. And isn't that the best thing to do with an agency? When you know you've got a client relationship or a situation where money's covered, just do your best work and do it faithfully and do it amazingly. And honestly, that is like that is the, the creme of the creme for us. And so how do we create those opportunities for us that does lead back to money? 
and DIBA can help with that. And again, think of DIBA, and I, I did this whole thing where we're building this, this pyramid here of traditional marketing, modern day marketing, DIBA on top of that. Then we go at the, the top, the, the, the tip of the, the pyramid, uh, I like to call it conscious growth pathways, where you're meeting brands at the intersection of in entertainment, education, experience, and empowerment. So through those lenses on the way down, you're not only showcasing what you can do or what the opportunities you can as an agency fulfill. And again, it doesn't matter what, what your actual tangible thing is, whether it's SEO, social media, paid media, content marketing, event marketing, management, um, acquisition marketing, whatever the case might be, acquisition management, you can still apply these principles into your tangible MVPs within your agency. It doesn't require you to do anything differently in the process. It's in the filtering, it's in the layering, it's the language that you're doing, and that can create more people open to having those conversations. So we, if you talk about the government, whole another untapped thing that made many agencies, and again, it doesn't matter if you're small or big. And this is really for the general, for the smaller agencies, tap into that government money. Position yourself and how you created campaigns and how you've done things from an equitable way. If they tie that back in, cool, awesome. But on the flip side, let's go outside of the government. There's a lot of funded startups and NGOs and nonprofits who are awarded funds as long as the agency can impact and employ what they're doing at the higher level. So another benefit of why you want to do DIBA is because this LS forces you to be more socially responsible as an agency, which can actually make you money because it positions you in a place different from many that, hmm, if I have to pick between three brands to work with me on a $10 million campaign for the next six months to drive this impact home, let me look at the one that's embracing change and reflecting what the modern day audiences will look like even the more. And what does that require? A little bit of your time, maybe some coaching, maybe some training, modifying modification of your language a little bit more. Those small little things stack up to big dollar amounts of opportunity just if you start now. And I'm not saying you have to figure it all out right now, but just in that small little three and a half minute window, I just kind of blurbed all about, maybe it sparks some ideas of what's possible by just embracing these things and making these modifications of changes. Love it. We'll do some research. We'll have the links to some of these resources in the show notes because I think that's fantastic advice, Troy. Thank you. And I also want to kind of underscore one of the things you said at the outset of that, that response was that while it's important to have a diverse employer, employees, a uh, set of employees. So that someone goes to your about page, they're not seeing a bunch of middle-aged white guys like myself. We want to see more color. You're more invited to the cookout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also think, you know, you mentioned how it's more than that and it can be more than that. And, and if you're living in that way, that's not where you are. That's not where the line is. It, you can be webinar guests, summit guests, and so on. Um, I, I got to tell I mean, one of the, the greatest compliments I think I've ever received uh, was our mutual friend, Kelly Noble Mirabelle where she was in a, in a social post, a Facebook post, something. And the, the post itself was talking about events. And they were talking about as speakers being invited to speak at events and how their standard practice as a speaker was before saying yes, was to go and look at who else is already speaking at that same event. So it's not, you know, one woman and 30 middle-aged white guys or whatever the case might be. And then she said, and I didn't ask her to say this, she just said, but I know if it's Mike Alton from Agorapal asking me to speak, I don't have to do that. Mm. I was like, yes, I appreciate that. Because that, that is that's something that's important to me. That's something that I've striven for 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 years. Is so that you know our events that we're putting on are an accurate reflection of of who we are and, and who we're talking to. So I just I wanted to you know just call that out and appreciate that you brought that up as an avenue for agencies and businesses who you know may be limited in other ways, but. I want to switch gears a little bit because I want to talk about um, how you're doing your agency a little bit. You know, social media is a big part of what we do. And so a big part of what you do. How are you currently measuring that business impact? Because for years, social media has just been this kind of a fluffy thing for a lot of businesses and a lot of agencies. They might report, you know, follower growth and they might report engagement, but that doesn't necessarily tie into the green as you've been so eloquently putting it all all show long right what are you guys doing today you know i'm before i even said I, I do want to acknowledge uh not to get all teary sentimental but agora pulse and you mike as well uh because you all again 
have seen me growing up. I a lot of the acronyms and things that I've echoed way back when are in my book, Shred Edges Up Now. Uh, a lot of the things that you all have literally given me the platform to talk on sparked me to actually be a public speaker. And again, from social economic status and coming from Chicago, people like me in certain areas do not get those opportunities. So again, kudos to you for shining and being a pioneer of acknowledging if we reflect the community, the community will reflect us and we'll grow and scale together. With that being said, what I've been seeing um, is a change in models of how we sell. And so we know we got we got the flywheel, we got the pipeline, and we got the funnel. And I've been challenging a lot of folk recently, we got to start making pathways because we're missing so many opportunities, so many gems, simply because how we've designed our sales model to basically debunk somebody from a meeting because they're not a buyer right away doesn't mean they can't be a buyer later. And I think one of the first things I did as the acronym was Bay Buyers, Advocates, and Elevators on, on one of these shows we've done in the back of the day. So I'm bringing that back. We're, we're going in a time warp, y'all. We're going in a time warp. And I've taken that same thing, added DIBA on top of it, and like how we do our sales model now. How do we do this thing? And with social media specifically, I don't see it anymore as just, a content distribution to garner to garner awareness. It is literally a pipeline to sales, and is bigger than what it used to be before. What are we tracking? How are we tracking this? For me, yeah, likes vanity metrics. I always think they're they are always indicator lights of we're moving in the right direction potentially, whether through paid or organic. But they're not the be all. Then you go a little bit higher, and the totem pole of. Well, we're seeing more engagement from comments and mentions, which is good. That means that's external factors that literally have to embrace and engage with that. So either our content is invoking that action or our, our body of work has created people cementing their minds to mention or comment on what we do, which is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But there's other layers to that. So now I want to get to like how many conversations are we having that are not sales related? but it's about us. That may feel like a weird mental thing. Like, no, I want every conversation to be a buyer conversation. No, I want, just how you said earlier, Mike, so beautifully said, people know who I am from the body of work. They have a certain premise of who I am, who I associate with, how I engage with. And from that nucleus, that moment, that can convert to more opportunities because if you sow those seeds in enough people, it's going to transcend social. We all know social doesn't stop on the external public layer. It's those one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's those voice messages that no one sees. It's the link clicks that drive into the Calendly link conversations that no one sees, the Zoom calls that no one sees, that we can now attribute back to that moment. And so what we've been doing now, again, going back to the conscious growth pathways, how do we, we're tracking experiences. Because at this point, everything that we do is a micro experience, everything. And now it's like, you know, Pokemon, you got to catch them all. We got to capture as many micro experiences as we can that are positive and in alignment that reaffirms and reassures to our audience, to our potential buyers, our ICP. We are here. We can deliver on what we do. And you know what? Sometimes we can post so much on social in a micro bubble that we limit ourselves to what's possibly what's next. Agorapulse has been known to constantly evolve and expand in its market share of what the offers that it provides based off what the demand of the market of the needs are for agencies and social media people in general. But we know your nucleus has been social. That doesn't limit your growth and, and possibility because of that. And we have to take that same helmet <laughs> and apply it to us as agency owners and not think, oh, because we're an SEO only type of thing, that's what we've been our thing. What's complementary to what we're doing? What are our active steps in that? And so going back to our pipeline, our, our pipeline, how we sell, we, again, flywheel, pipeline, funnel are missing things. The pathway, if you look at neuropsychology and it, all the different nodes have to fire in a subset of ways, it's the same thing with community and audience engagement. They have to go off in so many different ways. And eventually all these different nodes are blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. And they're connecting and driving us back blind to us. 
And if we can capture those experiences using social as an activator, as an igniter of that spark that drives to the email campaigns, that drives to the podcast, that drives to the blog, that drives to the in-person, digital, or live events. Again, and agents have such a hard time quantifying those experiences because they seem costly. And if it's not a direct relationship to money back to us right away, we think it's null and void. We've been screaming for more events. We've been screaming for more experiences, less maybe digital, more physical, or more immersive or more interactive than we could before. And so that's the challenge that agencies need to embrace now. We create experiences. The experiences will drive more people currency. The people currency will drive more real currency and will not only make money, but will be sustainable. And then putting us in a high position to scale on the basis of our community being advocates for us to scale. Love it. I know you guys are digging everything Troy's saying. And, and those of you who are wondering, we're referencing some past interviews where he was on our Social Pulse Weekly show. Those are on YouTube. I'll put them in the show notes. So if you want more Troy, I'm going to give you more Troy. And one of the things that you, I love that you were just talking about was that importance of these, these micro experiences, these individual conversations that it's frankly hard for us as human beings to comprehend the impact that we're having over time. When you know you and I might talk once, exchange a couple of Facebook comments, and then a couple of months later, have another exchange on X, and then a couple of months later, it's on LinkedIn. It's often not possible for us to really grasp the impact and the frequency, because there's so many things else going on in our mind, and we can only handle 120 bits in a moment. But I'll tell you, one of the fun things that I'm seeing today is that with this prevalence of AI and this explosion of tools that can leverage large language models that can look at all that data, it's going to be easy and easier for us as marketers to be able to see all these points and understand the impact that they're having. One of the things that I I loved about Google Plus. I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but one of the fun <laughs> things about Google Plus, they had this feature called Ripples. And with Ripples, you could see when you posted and other people engaged and shared that post and then who else saw it as a response, they would map all that for you. So it was just like throwing a rock in a pond. You could see that initial ripple that you created as a circle and then all the other little circles that might happen as a result of that we're going to start to get into that a little bit more now, I think, with these new tools that are going to show us those kinds of ripples and impacts over time across multiple channels. We've talked about some tools already in this show. What other tools are you using? Let's catch that segue. It's pretty good, right? What other tools are you using in your agency that you can share with the folks? Before I talk about that, I do want to add like another minute on on what you said and the problem with AI. And I've been talking about smart marketing protocols. Um, or SMPs for short, and that's taking those best practices, that's taking AI and methodology technologies. Again, with a human citric, I want to premise with human citric mm -hmm. undertones um, to optimize your resources. And one thing I've been telling a lot of people um, who maybe have resistance <laughs> to AI, um, again, Mike, you appreciate it because you're a historian of many things. Again, we uh, the same exact premise of resistance was at the dot-com boom. Are you mean to tell me I'm going to push out a website when I can just look at the newspaper? I can look at the radio, TV. Are you kidding me? Then dot com. Who? Same thing with Instagram. 2012. That's just for teenagers. It's not going to trans. Tra it's not going to transcend. It's not going to take off. Now you you would be a repulsive of yourself if you don't have an Instagram account today. And then again, early 2020 when TikTok was doing its thing, again that same premise happened, and here we are. And now we're looking at AI as the same way. Let's not think of it as a replacement or resistance. Let's think of how this tool can empower us. And, they, um, and for those who don't know, I actually pulled up some numbers, uh, and I will share this link with, with Mike as well. We can do some conduct some research. 51% um, of marketers and agencies say they don't have enough budget. 39% say they don't have enough personnel. And 34% say they don't have enough time. So budget, personnel, and time is the reason many agencies are not flourishing. Again, we're going to fundamental basics. But... The future, which is now the now, many believe that investing in AI will decrease operation costs. Now that's 90%. 95% believe that it will help pr produce better team productivity and impact while also managing and being more open-minded of mental awareness and lack of burnout rates with agency owners and their teams. And 92% believe that AI tools can reduce time on task, which we all know if we just embrace those 
thing that why well, I always got to do it. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> Put in the work to build the infrastructure. You'd be surprised how much it will save you time. Now, segueing that forward, one of the tools that we're using now, we're using Notion. We're integrating more of that into that system because it just allows us creatively create more things and connect more things. So Notion's in our tech stack. Uh, Zapier's in our tech stack to talk to things and make it all inclusive. And then obviously we're using HubSpot as a HubSpot partner as well. And with that, they're even going more strides in how they integrate AI and things like that. But you have to do your research and make sure what makes sense for you. I always like to say, start off small. And again, let's make this simple. If you're using Grammarly, you're using AI. I mean, we can go back in time. If you remember the clip from Microsoft Word, there's some AI component in there. Now, again, AI is a wide area, just how marketing is. You got generative AI and got pragmatic AI. And so I think sometimes people don't know the difference between the two and how that integrates with everything else. Yeah, your agency may want to create its own generative AI model to take all the information that you've ever done and for people to come and search. That takes a long time. That is not an easy feat to do. But we can integrate AI and maybe a simple knowledge base of content of media that we've done on a website for an easier fluid search to understand what their nuances are to pull up here's something that we've done to reflect. That may save a lot of time and cut a lot of time in the process of the life cycle to convert for sales and money and opportunities. And so bring it on home. Again, artificial intelligence is not bad. It is a way for us to actually maximize our time, reduce our budgets, and output our productivity in the way that's aligned to us. Now, how extensive or how impactful that is, yes, it depends on how much you have to, willing to invest in that to build that if you don't have it or the time allocate to learn it. But take it slow, do it slowly, and integrate it. And again, collaboration, y'all. There's a lot of folks who have built these things that don't mind sharing the tea. So don't think we have to do it ourselves. We can collaborate and get it all together. Couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm glad you kind of went down that rabbit hole of AI because it's obviously all the rage right now, but it is more than a buzz word. It is this revolutionary moment in history. I was just writing down notes because this is something I need to write about a, a bit more, not only to think about my own thoughts, but to share it with folks because they do need to understand it's not going away. It's not necessarily going to replace your job, but it is going to make your jobs a whole lot easier if you do it the right way. Like at Agora Pulse, we recognize that we're creating a lot of assets right now, particularly now, that are designed to both market the company and be useful tools for our sales team. This podcast mm -hmm. is a great example. If my sales team is talking to someone and they're expressing the kinds of challenges that we're talking about in this episode, we want our AEs to be able to share this just for the clients or the prospects own edification to help them out. And yeah, you could put all that in a spreadsheet, but how are they going to find this in a spreadsheet? They're not, but if they could use a system where they could just ask the AI, I need a resource for an agency owner talking about inclusion. It would spit this out or a case study or whatever it is that we fed in there. And those are the kinds of tools that to your point, people are creating these things Every single day, I subscribe to a couple of newsletters and every day they're giving me lists of brand new tools that are leveraging AI to accomplish exactly these kinds of tasks. So be open to that. Be aware of it. Troy, that's an amazing point. And this has been such a fantastic conversation as usual. You are just a fountain of knowledge and wisdom. I can't believe you're younger than me. It's incredible. For folks who want to know more about you, who they want to they want to tap your wisdom for their agency or for their event, where can they go to learn more and connect with you? Yeah, if you're looking for someone to spice up your event marketing or be an MC or host or speaker or whatever you need, season3media.com. We also also we also offer fractional services and even audits from marketing, sales, and even DIBA. If you need help activating those initiatives within your marketing or sales or operational team overall, we can help guide you or facilitate that with you or even with your clients as a third party support mechanism. As for me, if y'all been around for a minute, y'all know, again, I've been a baby on here and y'all watched me grow up and matured <laughs> and flourish and still find Troy everywhere on the internet. If you want to connect with me, I have a podcast, I digress.fm. I have a new podcast coming out called On Crypto Growth as well, all about talking on these things and more in greater detail. 
Love it. Fantastic. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Again, we'll have all the notes to all the resources, the episodes, the other people that we've mentioned on today's show in the show notes. And if you haven't already, please find us on Apple Podcasts, Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition. Give us a great rating. Give us a review. Let us know what you think. We'd love to have your feedback. Until next time, see ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of Social Pulse Podcast Agency Edition, hosted by Mike Alton and powered by Agora Pulse the number one rated social media management solution, which you can learn more about at agorapulse.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on your favorite podcast player and be sure to leave us a review. Your feedback is important to us. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Robbie Samuels hosts the On the Schmooze podcast. Robbie, tell listeners what to expect from the show. Since 2015, I've interviewed entrepreneurs who overcame challenges to achieve success in their field or industry. Tune in to On the Schmooze to listen as I ask deep questions to elicit untold stories about leadership and networking. And where can people subscribe? Find the show at ontheschmooze.com or on marketingpodcast.net or just search for it wherever you get your podcasts. You heard them. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.